Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this video. I know the studio looks pretty different and what I wanted to do is give you all a glimpse into my recording process. I'm doing some music for a company and uh, they specifically wanted crystal bowls and some other sounds. So I thought I'd invite you along. Now, right off the bat, I just want to be clear, I'm working on this project and so you guys are just going to be a fly on the wall for this. I'm not going to be doing a lot of talking because I'm just recording stuff. But I thought, if you have time and you want to see you know, what that looks like, uh, this is a video for you. And if you have some time, that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep in mind that you guys are there, but honestly, I just want to record some things and get some stuff done. So I've got my computer over here ready to go with a new project. I'm using Logic. I've got a couple of the Neumann mics over here. I know you can kind of see them down in the corner. Um, I just have the one shot, so I hope it's educational. I'll try to chit chat with you all a little bit uh, as I'm doing this. Um, but I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm just kind of working right now. And I thought, hey, maybe you want to see what that looks like. Um, so the camera's turned around. Usually it's facing that way. But this is my work desk. Um, I've got a, uh, my, some of my gear over here, which you can't see. Um, I'm going to record some of these crystal bowls, and I'm just doing free form sounds right now. I'm not really doing it to a click per se. My plan is to add some other sound effects. These are all going to be kind of ambient free form pieces with three or four instruments at the most. Uh, one of the things they wanted was this crystal bowl sound, so I'm just going to record some, you know, different, different lengths, different takes, and then I'll um, add to that over time. But I'm probably going to just pull these as samples and mix and match later and create compositions uh, with the sounds. So right now, like I said, just recording sounds uh, and that's it. So I'm not even using headphones. I'm just going to I'm just going to start the recording, record a little bit of audio and I'll, I'll play some back so you can hear what I'm doing. All right, so I don't know how long this is going to go. You can Obviously, it's a posted video at this point, so you can see, you can skip around. I'll try to put some markers in there, chapter markers, uh, so you can skip around if you want, or just, you know, hang out. Okay. 
I'm just going to check that and see, make sure it's there. This is recorded at a pretty low volume, but that's okay. There's not a lot of noise. And a sound like this, you know, it's not going to be really loud. It's over a background sound, so that's fine. You don't need it super high level. Um, I recently did, you know, this compilation project and uh, some of the people sent me recordings that were really hot, really high, and you don't need to do that because if you're mixing a band or mixing a bunch of instruments, everything you add is, you know, it's cumulative to a degree. So every time you add more instruments, the overall volume goes up and up and up and up. So if you start off really high for a single instrument, it doesn't really do you any good. I mean, signal to noise ratio is good. You don't want to have more background noise. You want to have foreground noise, right? You want to have the instrument you're recording. And it is raining outside. <laughs> Although I don't think it's an issue with something that's mic'd this close. But um, I'm going to go with this. I think it's fine. So I'm going to pull up the other bowl. There's a, this is the E bowl, and I'm going to record the same thing, same type of thing with the, with the low A. So let's create another track. And I'm going to name these now. E and A. E bowl and a bowl and I'm gonna mute the first one and I'll get that set up This one comes in a massive case. Um, one of the reasons I got the the A and the E is that you can you can store the E. You can store a smaller one, obviously, in the larger one easily with padding. If you get if you get bowls that are very close together, you need more cases because they won't stack together. So I'm going to adjust the mic. or the mics. And uh, let's do a little test. Okay, let's record. I'm going to turn this up a little. Wait for the plane to go by. <laughs> That's always an interesting thing with these garage studios. You know, you have to uh, you have to record when helicopters and airplanes are not flying over, or just use it in your music.
Okay. What's uh, interesting about these bowls is that uh, I know you guys can't hear this because it's you're getting this mono mix, but these bowls are nice. They're these are the higher end bowls, and um, right in front of it, I can hear the sound actually. In some ways, it grows after I finish striking it or playing it. If I if I rub the edge, there's a period where the sound actually matures and grows, and it's and it goes back and forth like this, and it's stereo, that's why I have stereo mics on it. It goes back and forth and it changes around the bowl. It's very interesting, uh, interesting quality with these. Um, I'm not um, a mystic in any sense of the imagination. However, I do like things that are interesting and I feel like these bowls um, are very interesting. They're simple, yet there's something about them that's kind of, um, it's just different than a lot of other instruments. Um, I know a lot of people write a lot of flowery stuff about them and what they do and powers and colors and chakras and all that and that's fine um, uh, but uh, to me you know it's music and it's an instrument and uh, yeah it's nice anyway I'm gonna move on I'm just gonna leave this going uh, leave this running and now I want to record a well, I'm going to put the Santour on some of this, so now I have to tune the Santour, which maybe you don't want to sit through, but I'm going to record some flute stuff real quick um, with a, I believe, an E minor, so I have to find, no, A, no, I can do A. I'll do low A and maybe regular A and maybe E, but probably A. <laughs> so I'm going to find my low A flute, and hopefully it's in tune I might do a mid A, a mid A flute as well, but I think for I think this will be better with low A. Yeah, so that's the same pitch as we just had, um, and I'm going to keep these stereo mics because it's just interesting. It's interesting for the sound. Um, it adds a little bit of depth, you know, to record in, in stereo. And when you record in stereo, and I'm not actually doing it right now, there, there we go. You want to um, record, if you can, you want your mics at a 90 degree angle, like that. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to add a track and then I'm just going to improvise a little and everything I play is not going to be used, it's not going to be useful and that's okay. So we have a, another track called A Bass Flute. And I'm going to mute everything else because like I said, I don't need to hear what I did before. Those are all just sounds I'm going to pick and choose and then assemble the music later. Oh, okay, I see what the issue is. It's getting a little bit of a breathy sound. I think what I'm going to do is take these beads off as well because as beautiful as this is, it could be noisy. So I don't want to have anything making extra noise. I don't want extra noise, I want the right amount of noise. So I'm going to pull this off. All right, naked flute. All right, I think my recording volume is okay. 
And again, I'm going to wait a little for the airplane, for the jet. You guys can't hear that, but I can. Passing overhead. You know what? I'm getting some noise from my speakers too, so. Yeah. Yeah, that bothers me. I'm getting a little bit of noise out of my speakers. And the volume's not even on, so. That's not good. I could go to pure headphones. But I don't think it, I don't think that's enough noise to make any difference in the recording. Like I said, I mean, I'm not doing a, a sample library. So it's okay. I'm going to live with the, it's just a very, very faint electric, electrical kind of noisy sound from the, um, the speakers here. All right, let's do a pass. Let's just give that a listen and check it.
It sounds pretty good. It sounds really clean, but I think some of the flute air might have been affecting the mics. Um, I do have uh, some popper stoppers, but you know what? I'm gonna do one more take, one more pass, and I'm going to just be a little farther away. So I'm gonna save that, because it's fine, but I think there might have been a little, a little bit of funny stuff going on. Um, and I don't want to set this all up again, so I'm just going to keep recording. And I think I'll just be back here um, because I think some of the stuff I played was a little a little too much for the mics in terms of the air pressure. So I'm gonna back off and go again. And I'll probably, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is all improv. Improv. I said improv. See, you can improv the word improv. It sounds good. There's a lot I can work with there in terms of the crispness. These mics are really nice. These are the Neumann uh, one, I don't know, 184s or something, 187, 817, 178. So now I am going to set up the Santour and what that means for you guys, if you're watching, you know, well, you're watching this right now because if you weren't, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't have heard me say that. So, um, see, logic comes in handy once in a while. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the Santour. And maybe you're interested in this. Uh, if you're not, you can skip ahead, fast forward, you know, slide it around. Um, because I need to tune it. And I'm going to tune it to the, to the crystal bowl because the crystal bowls are a little sharp. And um, I need to tune it directly to those. Excuse me, as I, I got to put away this <clears throat> this A flute um, on my flute stand. Okay, so let's get this out. So the Santour is in here. However, I need to get it on a stand.
and the Santour uses and I want to acknowledge and thank um, uh, Hamid Saidi for all of his help and being so generous in helping, you know, just helping me with the Santour setup because I'm just a guy from Oakland, not a Santour guy. And uh, I really do appreciate him spending some time with me on that. Um, so I can at least find where the opening of the, of the case is. No, so I can at least, you know, get, find my way around it um, because it was sent to me facing the wrong way. <laughs> it's good for you guys, you can see it, but I need to, to flip this around, hold up. See, I don't even know which way it's going to come out of the case. Hopefully, it's, it doesn't need too much tuning. Here's my tuning tool. We're going to find out in a second. Um, but I've, I'm excited about this. This is probably not the way I want to do this. Hang on. Hold on a second. Let's go over here, and then let's... Okay, they need a case that doesn't want to fall over when you pull the Santour out of it. Okay. Looks like my mics are trying to fall down too. Everything is collapsing. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll adjust that in a second. So we're going to put this like that. Are we? No, just rest it on there. All right, so let's do this. I could probably just use a tabletop. Now I know, how was this set up? I think, I think I just need to open this way up. Hello. See, we're learning together, you guys. That's what's nice about the channel is you get to learn at my expense. All right, let's put that up so it's not falling. Um, this is the stuff you don't see a lot, which is just fiddling around with stuff. Believe me, everybody who has a YouTube channel, there we go. All right, so that's... Everybody who has a YouTube channel does a lot of fiddling around with stuff, believe me. A lot of lighting, cameras, audio, setting up gear. Oh, that's good. All right, now we're, now we're talking. Okay. So, we're gonna get this angled a little. Oop, come on. that angled all right now well we'll get the mics in a minute um, these will be somewhere over here let me tighten this up okay hopefully that'll that'll be okay so now, um, let's see, Oop. we got these little things to play it, hopefully it's not too far off. Optimistic. Now, what I'm going to do is go back up to the A, the A bowl, and I'm going to loop it 
in a little section. I want to find, let me see. Yeah, that's okay. All right, I'm just gonna loop it right there. And um, I'm gonna try to get this kind of tuned by ear. Maybe it's okay. Yeah, it needs a little bit of work, at least on the low. And what's so hard about this, you, you see all these tuning pegs over here? There's so many. Um, so there's, for every one note on here, right? Every one of these, that's four strings. And they all have their own tuning mechanism. So, I'm just gonna go one at a time and see if I can dial this in. I don't even know if I'm on the right, okay, no. At least they're color-coded. See, I was tuning the wrong, I was listening to the wrong one. I don't even know what I'm doing. All right. Don't worry, you guys. I'm not gonna tune all the strings. I'm just gonna do enough I'm just gonna do um, what I need to make the recording, which is just a few notes. Let's go. All right. All right, so, you know, it, it's okay to be a little out of tune. Not way out of tune, I mean just have a little, you wanna have a little variety in there, it gives it thickness and richness, you know? You don't want everything to be, I mean maybe you do, but Sometimes a little out of tuneness just translates as thickness, you know? It's okay. 
All right, so this is the Santour. Not to be confused with a ride in a Jeep across a desert. So again, what I'm gonna do here is just um, try to play Just gonna try to play some stuff. <laughs> it's good to be specific when you're when you're when you're setting out to record. When you're fixing to record. Alright. I was trying to explain the word vittles the other day. To my stepsons, they, they never. Nobody says that over here. Um, I kind of like it. I think we should bring back the word vittles. Gonna fixin' to make some vittles. All right. Isn't that nice? Wow. All right. I'm just gonna play a little few. Uh, just a few things. Uh, let's go. that range Let's try that again. I'm 
I'm not really loving any of this, but we'll see. Almost. I kind of like the way that started, but yeah, let's try that again. That is hard. Aren't you guys, aren't you glad you tuned in? You're basically watching me practice right now. It's like, that's okay. This is what we do. This is what we do. Alright, that reminds me, I need to get some, just some vibe going.
All right. Well, I could keep going all day with that. Um, and it won't get any better. <laughs> It'll be about the same. I can, I guarantee you. So I'm just going to, you know, this is, this is kind of about, um, just seeing if these sounds all work together. I'll tell you one thing, um, the sound is good. The sound, I'm glad I bought these mics. This was a recent purchase. I talked about this in, a, in another video. Um, if you don't get the good sound in to the, you know, on the recording, you can't, you can't get it out. You don't have it. So, um, you know, I'm glad I, I invested in some good mics. Super clean, just really nice, musical. You know, not every microphone is musical. There's some decent, really decent, um, affordable microphones on the market, no doubt. But, you know, maybe they weren't made by musical people or musicians or, you know, there's just something about companies that, um, they're, you know, they're in the business. They get it. They they make things and they know what they're making and they, and they know why. It's not just making a widget, not just making a thing, you know. It's making something that has a purpose and they understand what the purpose is. And so even if it's a microphone, you know, to me, I hear a musicality there that I don't hear in other microphones. Um, there's lots of great mics. I'm not saying these are the only ones, but, you know, it, it does factor in. Um, all right, I think I'm going to wrap this up here because that's basically all I wanted to have recorded in this session. I'll, maybe I'll do some some ambient sounds, um, wind chimes or some other effect, but actually I have those already recorded in another project so I could bring those in uh, from there. But um, I'm happy with what I got in this, in this little session and then I'm just going to piece it together from there um, and try some try some things out. I just wanted to get some stuff in the computer so I can, like I said, I'll fly it around and create a couple little cues and then um, maybe uh, those will become available to the channel at some point. But I wanna thank you guys for hanging in, hanging out, and uh, we'll see you in a future video, of course, and we'll, you know, get back to more instructional stuff. But maybe this was instructional on some level. You know, you kind of see, you know, what, what we do behind the scenes. All right. Thanks for tuning in to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani. I'm going to walk over there and hit stop right now. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in.